We have the first uh, question from one of our participants in this new uh, this uh, online press conference, and it's from uh, Susanne Johansson from the newspaper BT in Copenhagen. She says, congratulations with the prize to all of you. And Thomas and Tobias, uh, will you briefly explain about the adaption process from book to script and from script to book? Well, this is our first movie together, hopefully not the last. Um, and uh, we just sat in a room at Centropa campus and um, both both uh, deeply in love with this book, doing pencil uh, drawings in, and talking about what to bring into this movie and what not to bring into this movie. And uh, I was messing around a lot and Tobias was cleaning up all the time and <laughs> keeping the focus. And uh, it was a very lively and wonderful process, right? right. <laughs> Well, you could say that, that the book have, has a certain structure that is not normal, uh, adaptable for, for, for screenplay. But the, the Because you shift focus from one participant, one to brother another. to the other. Yeah, you actually have two stories. Um, first the one, and then the other one. Um, and it wasn't a normal way to do it, but, but the decision we made from the beginning was to, to, to try to follow this exact uh, recipe that Jonas T. Benson had made in the book. And that was very inspiring and, and of course, hard to do. But, but also the biggest challenge and therefore the funnest part of, for me for, for writing the screenplay. It was a bit hard to do because the main character is an angry, not very sympathetic bastard sitting in a room looking into a wall, which, which is not necessarily dramatic stuff for a movie. Uh, but when you get to know this guy and you dig into his emotional life, you, you slowly start to fall in love with him. And, and conveying that to the screen was, was obviously uh, a challenge. But we like challenges. The next question is from Anas in Stockholm. Congratulations to you. Are you planning to do a new film together? Absolutely not. <laughs> yes, of course. We, uh, we're writing on something. Uh, hopefully it will come true one day. It's a big Nordic, Nordic drama involving hunting, mountains, forests. Maybe it will take place in Sweden, maybe in Norway, somewhere in the north. We don't know yet. Uh, the script was supposed to be finished a couple of weeks ago and we're still working. <laughs> so we're under severe pressure at the moment. But, uh, but this is the story of our lives. So. Mm -hmm. Mette in Copenhagen asks if you have decided, each of you, how you will uh, use the prize money. Maybe you should start. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's very uh, simple for me. Since I have Cow my... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have. Um, I see it as an opportunity to uh, work in, in my uh, my little company called Cacao Film, and uh, now I have uh, a couple of months. I can go and work on that and do nothing else. So I welcome it so gladly. Mm. To be yes. Well, for me, it means time to write because it, it buys a lot of time. I can I can actually spend this money um, just writing and hopefully writing the story that we're writing on right now and make it even even better uh, with this money. So I don't have to hunt uh, salaries everywhere else. Uh, so it gives me time to focus on the exact story that we're writing on now. So I'm very happy. I think. Mm -hmm. Thomas. My feeling is that Nordic Council um, have a track record of you know emphasizing a, a want for, for quality. Um, and I guess with this prize, there's, they're asking us to keep looking for quality and not do what, what's easiest and cheapest. And with this money, we can buy a little bit of time and we can you know, dive into our work and try to make it better. Other than that, I'm, I'm, I've always been dreaming of a BMW. <laughs> but I'm not sure if we can do both. <laughs> it'll, it'll be a small one. <laughs> it, it will be. <laughs> Sari in Helsinki asks, what is the Nordic spirit and what do Nordic film creators have in common? Say that again. I didn't hear it. Sari in Helsinki asks, what is the Nordic spirit and what do Nordic film creators have in common? That's for you, Morten. <laughs> well, I think that's a very tough question. So, Tobias, can you please help me there? Well, I, I, I can tell that I feel that we, in the way that we work, uh, stands on the shoulders of great storytellers, uh, Tiho Dreyer from Denmark and Bergman from, from, from Sweden. And there's a certainty of darkness in these stories. Um, I think it's because we're surrounded by darkness uh, one, one half of the year. At least. Uh, at least. <laughs> Um, and and, and this, this, we, we used to, to get together in small groups to keep warm and tell stories in this darkness. 
And actually, I think that's what we have in common. And that's the, 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 the kind of storytelling that we would like to do even better and try to, to develop into something, uh, something great. It's a weird thing for Nordic people. We find it kind of beautiful when things are dark and harsh. Mm. And that's a thing we have in common. That's a thing a guy from California wouldn't understand. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, and and there's, uh, it's deeply rooted in our storytelling tradition to, to, to tell dark tales. And that's exactly what we've done this time. Can I say something? Please. Because uh, uh, I saw uh, the, the Finnish contribution to... to yes, uh, Nuoro. Yeah, Steam, Steam of Life. Life. It's a film. The sound movie. It's a sound movie. Yeah. It's a film with uh, a lot of men naked in sauna telling stories of, of their life. Mm. It's a very, very moving uh, uh, film to see. It's very daring just to have people telling stories. There's no real dramaturgy in the film in that sense. They're trying to do something completely different. But, uh, but it's a, I would encourage everybody to see Steam of Life because it's a real Nordic tale, tale dark tale. And uh, I think, yeah, you know, do you understand what I mean? It's yes. uh, people just sitting there telling stories to each other in a very hot room. I, they, do you know what uh, they're planning on doing? Uh, yeah. The female version. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm trying to be a member of the crew, but it's not, I'm not succeeding at the moment. <laughs> Carsten Meinig from Montages in Montages in Norway asks, to me, the photographic part is the best of Submarino. Can you tell a little more about the visual thoughts and the visual staging of the movie? Yeah, I mean... Um, what they, a nice thing to say from Carsten. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, the, the thing about sh shooting a film like this is, um, one thing is obvious, it's a low budget. You have to stick. You have to stick to the very simple way of, of storytelling uh, in order to get your film done. And um, Charlotte Bros Christensen, uh, the DP of this movie, and myself, we talked a lot about how to sort of use this as an, an advantage to simplify the way things were told, to keep it to the point, not to become too sentimental, and still be find that little vulnerable thing uh, that's in the book and convey it to the screen. Uh, it was a lot of preparation and a lot of work, um, and I think she ended up doing a, a fantastic job. And it, this is her first feature, which is very well done, I think. Impressive, yes. Yeah. Jonas V. from Copenhagen asked a question to you, Tobias. I saw Submarino and lately your film R, and am wondering, how come that you are fascinated by the dark sides of life? What attracts you? Are you... And that's my own contribution to this question. Are you a very dark-sided person yourself? No, I don't think I am. But I think that the fact that I'm telling these stories allows me to be a good husband, hopefully a good father in my daily life. No, um, I don't know. It's, it feels natural for me. I love comedies. I love romantic comedies. But it just never felt natural for me to sit down and, and, and write them. I really tried in, in, in film school. So the first two features I've done here are, are dark, but, but also very important stories to tell. And I think that's my... That's actually the point and the reason that I do this. I, I try to tell stories that I find important. And I found these two stories very important. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, when you, when you uh, took on with uh, Tobias, he was fresh from film school. He had just finished his, his last, uh, last days. Uh, you were not scared by using a writer that green as Tobias was? Absolutely not. <laughs> I, I met Tobias. Uh, and he was, he had this calm, radiant charisma. And I, I thought, this is the guy I need. He's solid as a rock. As I said before, ironically, since I'm the old guy here, I was the one flimsing around the room, trying to change things all the time. And then Tobias was the guy keeping focus. And I also understood from the very beginning that he was deeply in love with this book and uh, was deeply capable of telling stories like this. Um, so, and, and then I really enjoyed the fact that he, this was his first movie, because um, this is a whole other kind of energy. It happens very fast. Over the years, you start becoming a career pilot, and you become a little corrupted and a little <laughs> self-absorbed. And then when fresh people come into the room, and they're actually sincerely devoted, as you were once, um, it's very inspiring. And, Half of the crew was, was first-timers, uh, a lot of new actors, and I, I really felt a kind of a rebirth uh, coming from that. So that was great. 
Jesper Knudsen in Copenhagen says, Congratulations, Thomas, Tobias and Morten. How come that it's always Sweden and Denmark that win the prize? Are they the best <laughs> film nations, Morten? Uh, no, they're not. I mean, uh, the first prize went to uh, Akis Kawismäki, I think. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I was in Finland this uh, we, this weekend, and uh, somebody asked me the same question, and I, I haven't got a clue. So uh, I don't know. We can say that uh, I think Finland and all the other Nordic countries has very very strong um, film societies. Um, film funding as well. Film funding, mm -hmm. and uh, I think there's a very proud tradition of filmmaking in all these mentioned countries. Uh, the Denmark and Sweden, Sweden runs away with the, the awards right now is, I guess, um, accidental. It, it'll be, yeah. it'll be, Iceland next year. You know? <laughs> it, it must be like waves, you know. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it's Denmark and Sweden. Sometimes Norway and Finland. But, things, but something like that. Denmark does have a very strong film society. Uh, uh, we've had that since the 90s. It has been weakened a little bit. But there is a very powerful um, communal sense in the Danish movie business, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's very important for this little, small, very tiny community to have acknowledgments like like the one we've, we're having today. Mm -hmm. The final question comes from your main actor, Jakob Sidergren, <laughs> who uh, asks, uh, "Will you invite him for dinner?" <laughs> <laughs> well, Jakob, this is only for producers and directors and stuff, yeah. so uh, I'm afraid you'd have to watch the <laughs> FC Copenhagen Barcelona game instead. No, listen, um, of course, there'll be of a seat for you tonight. I promise that. You can have mine if there's no one else. Uh, we'd love to see you. Thank you very much, and it's time to finish this news conference, and I'll just like to remind the journalists and reporters that uh, you can download a press release now and a press photo of the winners at the website nordiccouncilfilmprize.com. And thank you all for participating, and we hope that you will watch Nordic films in the cinemas near you in the future. And we'll see you next time at nordiccouncilfilmprize.com. Thank you. <laughs>